While examining for proptosis, you will have to start with examining the neck. Okay, when there is a swelling in the neck, you will have to demonstrate, ask the patient to elevate his neck gently and look at the dimensions. If possible, if required, measure the swelling. Approximate measurement will do. And then you start with relax, ask the patient to look at the distance and look at the face. Okay, and uh, you rule out if there is a cause of pseudotosis as you rule out tosis or pseudoproptosis this because of axial myopia now or it could be because of prosthesis which would result in other tosis wherein you will have a pseudoproptosis in the other eye so these are the things you will have to rule out and once you have ruled out you will have to examine if the patient has got proptosis in one eye or proptosis in both the eyes okay and mention it if there is proptosis in both the eyes say there is a prominence of both the eyes or say there is prominence of the right eye when compared to the left eye then you start with observation start with the Hirschberg's look straight please look at the corneal reflex with Hirschberg's also you must look for scleral show scleral show would be normally the eyelid upper eyelid is going to cover one to two millimeters of pupil and the lower eyelid is going to cover the lower limbus so if there is a scleral show there will be a prominence of the white strip in between so you will have to rule out scleral show the next thing that you will have to rule out is the congestion of vessels especially on the lateral side congestion would mean that there is some kind of activity going on and there is some kind of inflammation that will have to be ruled out the third thing that you will have to rule out is ask the patient to look down gently look down please and look for arterialization of scleral vessels look up especially for keratico cavernous fistula yes there is no arterialization of scleral vessel and look at the Hirschberg's reflex this will give a rough indication of um, strabismus if present and it will also give a rough indication as to if there is a axial proptosis or a non-axial proptosis you must start with your proptosis examination by going behind the patient before which you will have to observe for yourself and if necessary and if significant you will have to mention these are the things that you will have to mention when you inspect the patient the first thing is when the patient is looking straight and given a target the you look for the palpebral aperture if there is a widening of the palpebral aperture with both the upper scleral strip shown and the lower scleral strip shown it means that the diaphragmal sign is positive the second thing that you will have to see is if the patient has got a staring or if the patient has got an infrequent blink if there is a stare and there is an infrequent blink it means that the stelvac sign is positive and if the patient has got a, a, a staring and frightened appearance it means scorcher sign is positive and if the patient is not blinking frequently as normal patients would it means there will be an infrequent blinking that would mean the patient has got a positive stelvac sign now these are the things that you will have to note down um, before you start with your proptosis examination now always comment on the prominence as proptosis only by doing a Navsiger sign which I am going to demonstrate now. Navsiger sign is done by going behind the patient, asking the patient to come back. Your thumb will have to be on the occiput, your entire fingers, other fingers will have to be resting gently to the side of the patient, occiput and now ask for the patient if he's got any neck pain. If the patient has a neck pain, you will have to abandon this. Do you have a neck pain sir? No. No neck pain. So if there is no neck pain, you have to start with putting your thumb on the occiput, other fingers on the side, gently extend the head, ask the patient to look up and look for the prominence. Normally, when you see, when you do this Navsiger uh, sign, the eye, which is then not proptotic, will not be seen beyond the supraorbital ridge. If it is seen beyond the supraorbital ridge, it means that the patient will have proptosis. You will have to look for which eye is going to be seen first. If the right eye is seen first compared to the left eye, you must, be, you must understand that the right eye is more proptotic than the left eye. Once it is done, you will also quickly rule out other things like the preauricular gland. Examine the preauricular gland, mention it. Preauricular gland is normal. 
The cervical glands are normal. Submandibular glands are normal. Submental glands are normal. Then you will have to, if there is a prominence or a swelling in the neck, you will have to run your fingers gently and look for any lobulation, mass or tenderness. Okay. Once that is done, you come to the front and start measuring for if it is axial proptosis or non-axial proptosis. First rule out non-axial proptosis. This is done by simple scale measurement. Only if it is axial, you can continue with the hurdle 6 of thermometer. So first start with keeping your scale right in center. Then keep this other scale bisecting or transecting the center of the pupil. If it is going to be non-axial, then obviously the measurement is going to be different for the right compared to the left. Look straight please. It is about 45 millimeters. Look straight please. 45 millimeters. It means that it is axial and uniform on either side. Once this is done, to the side and keep the scale at the ridge, orbital ridge. Okay, as your marker, looks, ask the patient to look straight and look at the apex and measure. Now he's got about 18 millimeters here, which is normal. Go to the other side and repeat. Again the edge here and to the corneal apex. It is 18. So remember it should not be more than 2 millimeters and it should be less than 20 millimeters. So once these measurements are done, if there is a Dalrymple sign, you will have to measure the palpable fissure also. Look straight like this. 8 millimeters. So this is normal. There are few tests that we, we will have to do to rule out thyroid induced properties. The first thing is you will have to ask the patient to look up and down and you have to demonstrate lid lag. If there is a lid lag, you ask the patient, you will notice the lid does not follow the target when the target is moved down. Look up, look down, look up, look down. See, this is normal. If there is a lid lag, look up, look down. See, this does not follow. So, this is called Van der Graaff sign. Now, you just have to mention while moving the object up and down, the lid is not following the down gaze, which means there is a lid lag. So the Van Graaff sign is positive. Then you must ask, look for wrinkles. Look up, look up as much as possible. There is wrinkling here. And even that is a, a positive thyroid sign, and this is known as the Geoffroy sign. Then the final thing that you can do, the last thing that you can do for exam point of view, is to look for convergence. In normal patient, the convergence starts about 10 centimeters, but in thyroid. Uh, abnormality the convergence is going to be restricted because of the extraocular muscles now when you ask the patient to look for convergence it is if it is going to be restricted it is called Mobius sign look straight please look at the target look at the target now he is converging at about 12 centimeters which is normal if it does not happen then it means the Mobius sign is positive once that is done, I am going to see, I am going to uh, find out if the proptosis is same all the time or if it is increasing. You can either do a Valsalva manual or you can ask the patient to bend down for some time and, and then relax after which you will have to measure the proptosis. Bend down please. Ask the patient to bend down for 30 seconds. Relax and then re measure the proptosis. Look straight. There is no increase in proptosis. The proptosis has not increased in size after the patient does the, after the Valsalva maneuver or bending down. 
If there is a swelling in the neck, you must not ask the patient to swallow the saliva. You will have to ask him to drink water and then observe for movement of the swelling. If the swelling is fixed or if it is moving, please drink water. Now swallow. Yes, if there is a swelling, you will have to mention how it is done. Never mention the swelling, the movement of the swelling with just swallowing of the saliva. Once you have done with inspection, you will have to start with palpation. Palpation in the eye involves, close your eyes please, look down. So this, when I am going to inspect the upper, upper orbit, you will have to ask the patient to look down. Okay, that way the fascia is going to be relaxed. Use my little finger and gently insinuate to find out if there is any resistance to insinuation. Now ask the patient to look up. Please look up. Look up. Look here. There is no resistance to insinuation. Now look, close your eyes. You will have to look for warmth. You will have to look for tenderness. You will have to look for resistance to retropulsion. Resistance to retropulsion is done like this. Use this thing. Use five uh, fingers. Bring the fingers close together and gently retropulse. If there is a resistance to retropulsion, you will have to mention it. You will have to go for general thyroid examination. Thyroid examination starts with patient opening his mouth and putting out his tongue. Open your mouth and put out your tongue. Put out your tongue. Now there will be fine tremors if there is signs of thyrotoxicosis which will have to be uh, observed or noted. Close your eyes. Now look for his hands. Warmth, temperature. Note the pulse rate. The pulse rate is going to be very high. There can be tachycardia. Ask the patient to stretch his hands. Take a piece of paper and just keep it on the hands and look for tremors. If there is tremor, the paper is going to move and this is a very very sensitive sign of uh, eliciting fine tremors. You can relax. Once, if there is a fine tremor, you will have to ask the patient to lift his whatever clothes that he is wearing to check for pretubial myxedema and you will have to finish the examination with knee jerk. Then take your stethoscope, if there is a swelling in the neck, use the normal side and check for bruit or thrill. First, notice if there is any activity here and then use the bell of the stethoscope and check for thrill. There is no thrill. Close your eyes, use the bell of the there is no thrill. When the examination technique is over, you will have to, your examination of the eyes are complete when you do the cover, uncover test, cover, uncover test and alternate cover test to rule out strabismus and then do the extraocular movements with both the eyes open to see if there are any restrictions of movement at any position of case. Look to the light. Look to the light, look up, look down. You will have to ask the patient to look, uh, look straight to the target and ask the patient to look at the target. Look straight, look at the target to rule out linear dissociation. After the accommodation test is over, you will have to do a direct and a swinging flashlight test to elicit relative afferent pupillary defect. If it is there, you will have to mention to the examiner that either the optic nerve is compressed secondary to the thyroid disease or there could be a retroorbital mass which is uh, pressing on the optic nerve and thereby giving an RAPD.